I'm Casey with Chant Monster and Five. Nice to meet you. Um, we just had a couple of questions. You don't mind doing a quick interview with us? We honestly just don't know what's going on still. We only find out when you guys post yeah. on the news. <laughs> is Christopher your brother? He's a, no, he's my son. Your son? Yeah, he's our son. Okay. Do you mind yeah. if I we do a very quick interview? Just any questions you feel um, comfortable? Let me just get a jack on really quick. Okay. Again. Christopher stepdad. Stepdad. First of all, tell me how you're feeling as a father when all of this is going on and then your son right now being behind the bars. Oh, it's unfortunate. It's sad. You know, obviously, you know, it's not good for family morale. You know, we got a very distinct name, so clearly people can easily find us and all of this type of stuff. Um, but it's a sad situation, you know, with Chris. To be honest with you guys, um, <clears throat> Chris has always been a little bit of a troubled kid. You know, he's always done a little done little bad things here and there tit for tat but um honestly a lot of it was enabled by the police you know mm -hmm. he's had a lot of issues where he's gotten kicked out of different schools for fighting and there's never ever been any repercussions for it you know there's been issues that he's had where he's ran away from home the police just bring him right home you know and eventually through that process you know he kind of learns that oh there's no punishment for anything so my real issue has just been that the police kind of swept all these things under the rug once there was a public outcry, then they reopened it right. um, and then started looking into it. So to be honest with you, I feel like <clears throat> when we tried to ask the police to intervene and to help Chris when he was younger and when he did the small things, they refused to help him. And here we are today. You know, eventually when you, you're in a situation where the police won't discipline you, won't punish you for these things, there's only so much we can do. You know, I can, I can take away your phone and take away the internet and, and, and keep you in your room, but if it's already been established that you can leave the house without punishment due to the police, what do you think he's going to do? You know, so ultimately it's sad. Um, <clears throat> I feel like if there was more accountability on the police's end, we could have avoided this a long time ago. Um, if there was more accountability on the school's end, if we would maybe discipline children who get expelled from school for things like fighting, smoking weed, vaping, etc., etc., I feel like we could stop all this. You know, I feel like it's really been a failure for um, the school system, the police in Gilbert were sweeping stuff under the rug. And then this is the outcome. You know, you get these kids in Gilbert who think they can act with impunity. Um, they think they're never gonna get caught. Obviously, they're young, their hormones are out of control. And this is what happens. Right. You know, there's been no lack of discipline or punishment, you know, on our end. Um, but sadly, you know, this is the sad state of the world, you know, and it's really an unfortunate situation that he's gotten himself into. And you were saying as parents, you were trying to intervene. So I think that's the thing I gotta just be honest with you with. People are wondering what were the parents doing when that's the big question mm -hmm. right now. Well, let me, ask, let me ask you this. So first and foremost, say. Christopher is not a Gilbert goon. <laughs> he's not a Gilbert goon. I mean, these stories, they slant it and they read as if he's a Gilbert goon. He's not a Gilbert goon. He's definitely not a Gilbert goon. I can say that I've seen conversations, mm -hmm. private conversations that he's had with his friends about events that they've had with that same group of kids. You know, they've had run-ins with those kids um, before. So is he a part of that group? Heck no. So it's been a little frustrating that he gets painted in this light like he's involved with that group and this Preston Lord kid. It's nothing to do with that, you know. Honestly, they're just kids that really are kind of troublesome. Um, and yeah, as far as parent intervention, I mean, first and foremost, you got to understand that Christopher is 18 years old. So there's only so much we can do at this point. But truthfully, again, um, like I said, we discipline the kid, you know. But once it's been established that, hey, I can run away and the cops are just going to bring me home, what, what discipline matters? Because now I can discipline you, but he's just going to leave the house. Right. And when it comes to what you were saying that he was troubled for a couple of years, now how far back did this go? And then when you're saying that police, and it was it specifically Gilbert police that you're saying Gilbert that police. failed you? Yep, Gilbert police. Yeah, I mean, and obviously they probably sealed the records because he's a minor, but the kids ran away, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 times. And each time it's the same process. It's parents enact punishment, kid gets upset, kid leaves. Gilbert police says, we bring him right back home. We beg the Gilbert police, hey, can we punish him? Can we teach him a lesson with this? Can we please do something uh, that shows him that this is not okay? And they say no, you know, because he's a minor, their protocol is to just bring him back home. So again, we rinse and repeat. So now he gets brought back home. We punish, we discipline you however we can, stern talking to, like I said, we can take away your phone, your internet access and, and all these things. But at the same time, once it's understood that you can just leave whenever you want to because the police will do nothing, our hands are tied, you know? And ultimately because they're minors, that's their protocol. So truthfully, that's really been the outcome and how that cycle has repeated itself for 
probably years, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. And now that he is 18, though, um, and is in police custody, though, we're wondering how he got there. Is there something that you guys did? Did you reach out to police, or would they, they just come here? What, had he been living with you as 18? What's that yeah. story about? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the police just knocked on the door one day, said they wanted to talk to him. He's a grown adult. You know, I sent him out here to talk to the police. Hey, whatever you did, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're involved in, you know. Talk to these guys. And then 10 minutes later, they said, hey, we're taking them. Um, when it comes with these like kind of cases where you're saying um, Gilbert police did not do their part. Right, yeah, so these situations happened a long time ago. You know, this was back in August, back in September of last year. There were open cases on these. What happened was is the Gilbert police closed the book on them. And then once a kid finally died, then they turned around and said, okay, now we're gonna reopen this. When truthfully, they should have addressed these matters back then. And I feel like if they would have done that, then we could have avoided all this from happening in the first place. It's just another system or, or just another, just more evidence that leads to them just sweeping stuff under the rug, allowing certain people to act with impunity, and then being surprised when things escalate. They would have stopped it back then. If we would have done, if, if the Gilbert police would have intervened back then, I think we could have avoided a lot of this. And so back then, was he 17 when these cases happened? 18. He was 18. Um, and he was living here, though. Is there anything that you did? I mean, like, kind of like, why was he still here? Did you kind of tell him if you don't straighten up your act, you're going to go out or anything? I think people are wondering, why would he still be here with you all if you weren't okay with everything that he was doing? No. <laughs> Do you mind? Sorry. Yeah, no, it's probably, it's, we didn't know. So if the cop doesn't come to us and say, hey, there's a problem, like, you have to keep in mind, no one's been at our door since he's been 18. So it's one of those things where... He was in a GED program. He's doing what he's supposed to. Was he working? No, but half these 18 year olds aren't. So it's one of those things where people want to hold you accountable, but then at the same time be like, oh, an 18 year old is an adult. So you can't have both situations. And yes, he got room checked and yes, he got phone checked. So we still even did that at the age of 18. So it's one of those things where these kids, they talk on social media platforms where the stuff deletes, Snapchat, stuff like that. So you're not gonna be able to see everything that your child is doing. It's like, it's impossible. But when it gets addressed, that's when you allow things to play as they are. My Arthur children have always been taught, if you get in trouble with the law and it's something you've done, you have to serve those consequences. So when the news says he's been arrested again, that makes it look like we bailed him out and then he got in trouble again. When that's not the case, he was there and they found him out of 20 to 30 children in a video because it's easier now to point someone out once you've already identified them and then they tack that on so the social media is also playing into the fear and the frustration right and then people unfortunately aren't free thinkers of their own so they don't even do their research to confirm oh he was still in there when he got in trouble for a previous incident that happened way beforehand so I mean, you can only do what you can do. And so right now, he's serving his time. That's how we feel as a family. You should do it. Does it mean he's guilty? We don't know. We also don't know the evidence. It slowly gets rolled out to his lawyer because there's minors involved. And that's also another thing. This isn't a 25-year-old, not to make excuses, but this isn't a 25-year-old fighting someone like 1,600. These children are still in the same age group, same friends group. So, I mean, it, it happens. And this is just this is the recourse if you get in trouble you go to jail or you at least have to serve some type of punishment and and he's done that when he was underage as well it's called a diversion camp so that's where they do do things like anger management and stuff like that but when you're around still the same group of people and you guys are all in on it together it's one of those situations where you just kind of have a an animalistic behavior unfortunately you know what i mean that you're your, your right thinking goes out the window when everybody is fighting at once. And someone eventually has to say, yo, we can't be doing this. But who's to, who's to do it? These children all follow each other. And then you have situations where the kid who got fought in May, they didn't bring that to the attention of the authorities until January. So How you, long did they sweep it under the rug before they did something about so it? So you have to, like, you can only do so much when you've been presented with nothing. Like, you know, so... That's just that's just where we are as a family as well. It's not it's not to say that we are worse victims than the kids that are getting fought, but when children or young adults do things and now we have to answer to it, 
we have nothing to do with this. And, and let's keep, and let's be honest too, you know, does everyone's parents know where they were at when they were doing stupid things as teenagers? You know, when you're sneaking out, going to parties and having sex and smoking weed and all the things that young people do, you know, did your parents know where you were at at all times? No, they didn't, you know what I mean? Kids are good at hiding things as well, you know? So again, mom does the phone checks and all those things. We enact discipline, the police don't back us. So we get into a repetitive cycle of doom, unfortunately. And so you say you tried to intervene and you had no idea that these were something that happened. You thought he was on track to improve yeah. his GED and everything. Um, and then you're saying right now, this is what happens though. But as a mother too, mm -hmm. um, knowing your son's already behind bars right now, mm -hmm. facing assault charges and all that. I mean, how is that making you feel though? I um, mean, emotionally it takes a toll on a parent, especially a parent who wants better for their children and provides the means for that. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people, when you look at news articles and stuff that are about him, go, oh, black kid in Gilbert. So, you know, that's what we naturally faced the minute we moved out here and bought a house. And so it's not a situation that's fun to be in. Um, it's also a situation that you feel very bad for the other child because you understand the emotional toll that they're going through. And so you understand why the parents are doing what they would do. I would do it for my child. If my children came home and they had just got beaten up by one or a bunch of people and it's not something they inflicted on themselves, we're going to the authorities. And when the authorities don't do anything, we're going to the media. So I understand why the parents are doing this. I don't fault them at all. This is, children have to take accountability for their own actions. Blank, telling the parents that they have to take faults for it then removes the accountability from the child and then addressing their behavior and correcting their behavior. So this is where he has to be if he's unfortunately getting in trouble. That doesn't remove our love and it doesn't remove our support, but at the same time, you do the crime, you do the time. Right, and we quite frankly bought a house in Gilbert to escape some of the things that you know, you'll see in other places. You know, we lived in South Phoenix before we came here. So he may have been exposed to some things down there, you know, that are less than favorable, but that's why you moved to Gilbert, to keep your kids away from those things. Now, if they choose on their own accord to be sneaky and do this and this and that, hey, um, again, you can only have so much control over another person's actions. I mean, even your husband, your wife, or your spouse, you can't control their actions. You know, you can't control the actions of another human being. You can only do your best to raise people and hope that um, they enact those principles that you instill upon them, you know? And unfortunately, kids are sneaky. They do things that uh, they don't tell their parents about, you know? And you can even phone check and follow their social media and do all these things and they can still hide stuff from you. So it's never been anything that we've supported, obviously. You know, it's, it came as a shock to us, you know? Do we know that he's had fights in the past? Absolutely. Um, to this magnitude, this isn't anything that we would know about, you know? So that's a little bit of a surprise. But however, again, you know, there's, we don't want to take accountability away. I feel like he should be held accountable um, for any actions that he did commit. Um, however, I do want to also double down in saying that um, had there been more accountability sooner by the Gilbert police, I think a lot of this could have been avoided. And right now, where is the, the his bail set at? Do you all? A uh, hundred K, I think it's a cash bound because of the second fight. Right. Yeah. So in that, that's no part in you guys trying to get him out right now? No. Okay. Uh, They've always been taught that if you got arrested and you know you did it, I'm not your bail. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, like I said, that's one of those things where you teach your children, but they have to learn their whole their own lessons, their own lessons. And this is unfortunately a hard lesson to learn because this is your youth and this is also your brand. So when you go to look for a job and stuff and if an employer decides to look you up, they see this. And once again, He's not a Gilbert goon, but obviously you're out here causing havoc, mm -hmm. and that's not okay, and that we don't support. So do I think that this accounts for a crazy amount of time in prison? No. Is it a possibility because of the high-profile case and then wanting to make an example out of somebody, and he's one of the 18-year-olds? Very possible. But you also can't control the narrative that you face when you do things. So, And if found guilty? I uh, found guilty. We're not too certain how that goes. His hearing, I think, is on the 25th, so we'll find out then. Yeah. And you were saying both, like, it, it, Gilbert police didn't really do anything to 
intervened this earlier, but it took nope. parents. You say you understand why parents are pushing for this and all that, but is there anything else you want to say? The fact that parents are like trying to do even more work to try to get some justice on their end. I think that it's fair to want justice. That's the whole purpose of our justice system. But I also think that people have to take into account who they're dealing with. You know what I mean? So you are, although on the number 18 is an adult, you are still dealing with youth who are trying to figure out their lives. And a lot of us have done things that have not been brought to the light. A lot of us who have done things we've been able to handle in a private matter. You know what I mean? And so in this scenario, unfortunately, it's not private. But you just keep going. Is there anything else either of you would like to add? Yeah. Um, personally, I think there should just be more accountability for youth in general. Um, I don't think that 14, 15, 16, 17-year-olds should be able to act with impunity. I do think that there should be discipline and there should be consequences, even for events that take place within school grounds on school hours. I don't think it should be a case where um, you should escape punishment and accountability in those situations because I believe that if you teach them that accountability early, um, you, can, you can build the necessary character for them to grow up and not engage in such acts as they get older. And unfortunately, um, that's not what happened in Gilbert. You know, he got expelled from a couple different Gilbert schools for fighting. And in both instances, you know, they just kick you out of school, send you on your way, you know, and you don't know too many kids who see that as a punishment. Oh, I get kicked out of school, like whatever, you know what I mean? So, no, I, I just think there should be more accountability for youth. Um, I don't think the police should sweep these things under the rug like they had been. I think that um, when these cases come to the light, in real time that they need to be addressed in real time. It shouldn't take public outcry. Um, it shouldn't take months later um, for them to be addressed because like she said, we're talking about something that happened May of last year. We're talking about something that happened August of last year and these cases were already open. They closed them and didn't do anything about it until Gilbert got upset about it. So is Gilbert right to be upset? Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Like we said, you know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna absolve him from any wrongdoing. We do believe in accountability. Um, but like I said, I just feel like it's been a whole, the, the system has failed him, you know, in, in a lot of ways. And I just hope that he's able to atone for his wrongdoings. Um, and hopefully we can move forward, you know. Thankfully he is 18 years old, so this isn't the end of his life. Um, but it will be a, a stern learning point for him. And, you know, we, are, we obviously just hope that he comes out and, uh, and, and is a better person having learned from this experience. Thank you. Well, thank you both for speaking with me. Mm -hmm.